our borders must indeed be kept safe. The nation and its men and women in uniform are equal to this task. Just as your predecessors mastered great difficulties in the past, so too will you use your diligence, patriotism and innovation to meet the problems that face the country. You will not fight alone. Our friends across the world, as well as our neighbors in the region, will stand by you. To those who are committed enough, to those who know what they are looking for in life, yeah! and to those who think have the capacity and the resilience to stay the course, that is to be found in a KDF in Mountain View. It exposes you to many experiences. It challenges you to think beyond limits. It teaches you how to first and foremost love your country. But I think the core values of the Kenya Defense Forces that are deeply inculcated in the minds of our men and women in uniform are without precedent. To serve in the KDF is to serve in the best part of what this country has to offer. This is KDF. The Kenya Defense Forces, or the KDF as we are popularly known, are the armed forces that serve to protect this country. The force is made up of three sister services, the Kenya Army, the Kenya Air Force, and the Kenyan Navy. The KDF was established and laid out in Article 241 of the 2010 Constitution of Kenya and is governed by the KDF Act of 2012. The President of the Republic serves as its Commander-in-Chief. The origins of the KDF can be traced to the King's African Rifles when the country was a British protectorate and later a colony. At independence, the colonial forces were transformed to become the Kenya military forces under the new government of the founding father of the nation, Mze Yomo Kenyatta. The new government was then legally empowered to assign new names to the forces units. From this very humble beginning, KDF has transformed to become one of the most formidable forces in the continent and in the world. What is the mandate of the KDF? Well, the mandate of the KDF is to defend this country. It is not only what describes in the constitution, it is also even better captured in the KDF Act. For any organization to succeed as a unit, it must have a leadership anchored on a tried and tested leadership style, and the KDF is not an exception transformational leadership. This is a type of leadership that goes beyond the normal routine. Transformational leadership has to do with uh, dealing with situations that are, that are unique. Unique in the sense that uh, if you are leading an organization, or even a country for that matter, when uh, that country or that organization is going through difficult periods, uh, then you are forced to think outside the box more innovative, more charismatic, uh, people-centered kind of leadership, empathizing the people you lead, and internalizing and idealizing that which they stand for. If the KDF, the CDF, comes out with a training plan, and this is a three-year training plan, which means the first year we concentrate on the junior fellows, which is the soldiers at the lower level, the battalions, the brigades, then the second year, 
we go now to the formations and the GOC. The third year, then that is the time now when we do a tri-service exercise. The mission of the Kenya Army in that is that anything to do with land-based aggression, then that is our duty. The mission of uh, Kenya Air Force is uh, specifically to defend the Kenyan airspace and maintain sovereignty of this airspace at all times. Of course, as provided for, for the entire KDF, we also assist and cooperate with other authorities in situations of emergency or disaster and may be deployed to restore peace in any part of Kenya. As a commander of the Kenyan Navy, my role is first and foremost to protect the integrity, maritime integrity of this country. Secondly, I must prepare the maritime capabilities to be used when the national interests require them to be used. Then how do all services that operate such different universes work together? Below me uh, in the KDF, I have uh, the service commanders and other senior officers working under me. Uh, leadership and command are central to our lives and our careers. When we went to uh, Somalia, we were able to pull along together. We thought through together. We rejoiced and suffered uh, together, but nonetheless we still maintain the vision. We were able to appreciate each other's strengths and weaknesses. We were able to aggregate our individual strength and work on our weaknesses. And that was cascaded all the way downwards uh, to uh, our soldiers. There wasn't a single moment where we lost a battle to Ashabab. There was never a single moment where our Shabab was able to recapture any place that we had captured to date. Synergy is actually working together. Your strength plus my strength plus his strength equals success. That is actually what Synergy is all about. And therefore, between me, that is the Army, the Air Force, and the Navy, we work together that way. All these people work as one, all important. There are those who are directly involved in war. Uh, there are those who do the immediate support, combat support for those who are in war, and there are those who do service support. We view ourselves as a narrow, where we have a narrow head, we have the shaft, and we have the fins, without either of which we cannot perform. KDF is a joint services. That means we work as one. When a mission is there, then we craft a force, joint force, according to the mission required to be executed. Hence, under the Chief of Defence Forces, the service commanders have worked together to keep our country safe. But getting to serve in the KDF is not an easy task. You must be one of the very best the country has to offer, and it all starts with the recruitment drive. This recruitment is conducted by KDF headquarters. To join KDF, you must be a Kenya citizen. That is very important and that's the first thing that we require. You must be between the age of 18 and 26 because that is the age that one is uh, young, is agile and able to undertake the most difficult duties that we do. This, is, this applies to both officers and men or service members. However, for specialists, we allow up to 29 years old. Another thing is that you must be physically and medically fit. Other requirements are that one should not have a criminal record. Men should be a minimum height of 5 feet 3 inches tall and weigh a minimum of 54 kilograms, while women should be a minimum of 50 kilograms and not expectant. The recruitment process is very thorough, so you get to work with people who are very qualified. The training is very strict. Your discipline is ingrained into your mind, into your soul. You, you have to be disciplined 24-7. Number one section, not safe, I'm proud back. The recruit training aims at breaking the civilian into a soldier.
The training focuses on weapon handling and war tactics. We have another category of officers who serve in the military. These are the specialists in any field KDF may require services in. These specialists have to undergo military training for at least four months to induct them into the workings of the military. For the cadet officers, the recruitment process is thorough and exciting, which makes it very competitive. It starts with advertising of a cadet recruitment drive in the local media. Defence Headquarters shortlists candidates who are invited to the second round of recruitment at the Kenya Military Academy in Lenet. Training is for a period of three years, culminating in a degree in Bachelor of Science in Military Studies, which we, is offered in collaboration with the Kenyatta University. The training is anchored on three pillars, and that is uh, professional military training, character development, and academic development. In professional military training, the cadets are converted from civilians to become junior commanders. The focus is on uh, equipping the trainees with the basic soldiering skills as a foundation for further military training when they uh, graduate from this academy. Character development focuses on inculcating military norms and values in the trainees. The aim is to make them appreciate the values of discipline, integrity, commitment, self-sacrifice and moral integrity, the cornerstone of a wholesome military soldier. Academic development aims at broadening the scope of knowledge of the trainee. At the same time, it seeks to develop their analytical skills to undertake research and above all, prepare them to integrate with fellow officers and people of other cultures. The best moment in the training was when I was in exercise Nusavita, when I was able to navigate 130 kilometers for three consecutive nights without sleeping in a desert area. I'm happy that I'm training in this military academy because this is the best military academy in East Africa. We are given equal opportunity as female cadets, as male, as we do everything, each and everything equally, the same time. I would like to thank Kenyan Defense Forces for the great cooperation they have made with our country, Ugandan Defense Forces. At least we are very lucky because we have cooperated with them and I would like the Defense Forces to continue cooperating even worldwide that we can at least get knowledge from other countries. Ningependa kushukuru sana jeshi la Kenya na ningependa ushirikiano kati ya Kenya na Tanzania uendele kudumisha umoja wa East Africa. As a Kenyan cadet training with my fellow counterparts from Uganda, Tanzania, Burundi and Rwanda, uh, it has brought a lot of cohesion and as future commanders we do know that in future definitely I'm going to meet some of them at higher ranks at higher positions. In a future event Instead of us fighting, we'll be able to sit down and talk our issues out. These statements encapsulate the core business of the KDF institution, the International Peace Support Training Center. IPSTC is a center of excellence uh, with a mandate to build peace support operations capacity within Eastern Africa Legion. IPSTC was established to build capacity for peacekeeping missions in the Eastern African region and the world over. The center conducts training at three levels. One, at the strategic level. At this level, the training targets peacekeeping commanders who end up serving as senior mission commanders in the AU and UN peacekeeping missions. The operational level training aims at capacity building for staff officers who are usually deployed within the headquarters of the peacekeeping missions as administrators. While training at the tactical level, focus is on troop commanders who eventually move out to train their own troops before deployment.
The Engineers Brigade of the KDF has the responsibility of supporting KDF in peacetimes and during operations. Our mission is just to provide combat and general engineering capability in support of the Manuva Commander's plan. Our vision is to be a professional engineer organization responsive to the defense forces and national needs. Our role, therefore, is to provide combat engineering support to the maneuver commander in war. The secondary role is to operate as infantry on infantry role. The engineers have therefore been involved in construction of both houses and roads, sinking boreholes for military and civilian use, road repairs, rehabilitation of schools and public facilities, especially those that were destroyed during the post-election violence of 2008. Other activities involve counter IEDs Counter IED stands for Counter Improvised Explosive Devices. This is a team of experts that searches and destroys these bombs that are set by terrorists before they can harm the public. An IED can take many forms. It could be that innocent bag left in front of your office block, entrance or in the bathroom. That carton by the wayside. Learn to suspect any abandoned objects left unattended in your environment. This brings us to what we call the seven basic security checks against IEDs. Don't be the eyewitness. In case of a blast, don't rush towards it, trying to witness a story you may never live to tell. If you didn't drop it, don't pick it. In case you see an unattended item, a bag or a luggage that has been left, report it to the nearest police. Don't ignore anything that looks out of place. Report it to the nearest security agencies immediately. It is advised to conduct counter IED awareness programs, both on the security personnel who are manning your areas and also among your staff. The Defense Forces Memorial Hospital. The hospital was opened by the founding father of the nation, Mze Jomo Kenyatta, in 1970 to provide Medicare for KDF heroes who got injured in their various operations in defense of the country. The facility has been the main referral hospital for KDF staff serving in the field and in the units together with their families and has been a main support to the civilian Medicare the hospital has also grown to become one of the main teaching hospitals in the country. Over time we have grown in terms of uh, technology improvement. We have a uh, uh, very modern uh, ICU, a radiology department, which is uh, very effective. We have a hospital management information system which has been able to help us improve on our efficiency in terms of documenting patients, uh, free flow of information, which is pertinent to us efficiency and service provision of our customers. Over time, there has been a very big confidence, I would say, to, uh, within our clients. Um, most of our soldiers do not go to seek Medicare outside anymore, which is a key moral factor to the soldier. They don't have to look back when their families are taken care of in this uh, institution. KDF undertakes a lot of humanitarian civil assistance. This involves hydrological survey and sinking boreholes for communities in arid regions. Other activities include vet camps for farmers in the marginal areas. The idea to create a disaster response unit was mooted after the 1998 twin bombing of the U.S. embassies in Nairobi and Dar es Salaam. The loss to public life and poverty was immense and so KDF responded to the public concern that the country lacked capacity to respond to disaster. DRU is one of the best trained and equipped units in the continent 
and is capable of undertaking rescue missions in the country and beyond. The unit has undertaken a lot of rescue missions. They include collapsed buildings in Thika, Mlolongo, Pipeline and the Madare landslides. The 1st Canine Regiment This regiment was formed in the year 2012 as a measure to counter the terrorism threat that Kenya was experiencing. It was in line with the current nature of threat that we've been facing as a country in terms of the asymmetrical warfare, the terrorism threats that we've been having. So the commanders saw it fit to introduce the capabilities that the dogs have in that the dogs are able to, to sniff out explosives in a way that human beings are not able to. Environmental Soldier Program The Environmental Soldier Program was started by KDF in 2003 after the realization that contemporary threat to national security has evolved beyond the traditional definition. Inter-ethnic conflicts have become frequent as communities compete for dwindling communal and national resources. Most of the strife emanates from the fact that the environment is degraded beyond sustaining community livelihood. What are the objectives of the Environmental Soldier Program? The objective of the program is to ensure total national defense by ensuring uh, so, uh, soldier readiness and also enabling sustainable communities within and without the military parks. The Environmental Soldier Program to date has planted more than 18 million trees, mostly in the water towers of Mao, Mount Kenya, the Mao Complex, the Cherangani Hills and Mount Elgin. In this endeavor, we have collaborated with the Green Belt Movement, the Kenya Forest Services, the Ministry of Environment and Natural Resources and other like-minded organizations. You probably have never heard of the Kenya Ordnance Factories Corporation. The corporation was started in 1986 under the State Corporation Act and was gazetted in 1997. Its main task was to produce small ammunition for small arms for the different government agencies while the rest went to allies in the region in an endeavor to secure peace for national and regional development. The vision of the Kenya Ordnance Factories Corporation was to be a premier uh, organization in terms of production of small arms ammunition. The mission is to produce uh, military hardware. One of the premier products is the KDF Field Kitchen. The kitchen is a high energy saving device that uses one liter of diesel fuel per banner per hour, making it one of the most efficient energy saving cookers in the world. The mobile field kitchen, which is now a product of Kenya Ordnance Factories Corporation, was designed to assist the Kenyan military in their, during their operations. The equipment is versatile for Kenyans. The mobile field, hospitals, colleges and other public institutions. Kenya Ordnance Factories Corporation diversify into other areas. They include the KDF Water. The aim of this project is to provide KDF personnel with clean, safe water, whether in the field or in the office. Our other organizations include DEFMIS. DEFMIS stands for Defense Forces Medical Insurance Scheme. The aim of the scheme is to provide quality Medicare for its KDF personnel upon retirement. The Defense Forces Canteen Organization, DEFCO, aims at ensuring that KDF personnel and their families, wherever they are stationed, can access services that make their lives easier as they dedicate their lives to secure this country. On the other hand, the Defense Forces Comrades Association, DEFOCA, aims at ensuring that once KDF officers retire, they have a comfortable old age as they interact with their peers. So, 
tonight, when you go to sleep, rest assured that all around our great country, there are men and women standing at the ready to fight, to protect, to defend. These are the men and women of KDF. <laughs>